Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. We have today another top five. And as somebody had recommended, um, you know, put your top five somewhere in there so you don't drone on for all eternity without mentioning something. So I will put them in the description, my top fives. Um, because I don't want to just tell you what they are at the beginning of the video, I like to roll out progressively, as a long-winded professor should. So, uh, I'm going to get into my top fives, and today we're going to look at the top five Linux media players. Now, disclaimers. The top five Linux media players I'm highlighting are the ones that I personally find the most useful for various reasons, and once again, I'm going to explain why they are my top five. I'm not just going to say globally and universally for all Linux people, these are the top five media players we all need to be using. No, this is a, this is a video to explain what I'm doing because this channel is about why I switched to Linux and hopefully helping you to switch to Linux as well and how do we operate with all of the different things throughout uh, throughout the, the different systems. And understand that on different Linux systems, I will use different software based upon, you know, whatever factors. And that's why I'm going to get into why these are my top five. So with that, we're going to dive on in. So my top five pick for media players is VLC. So VLC is not my absolute favorite media player but I do find it to be the most useful and most versatile. No matter what system I'm on, VLC seems to shine through for me. So VLC, of course, is cross-platform and cross-device. I have VLC installed on my Mac because I do not want iTunes to touch anything. I don't trust iTunes. Bad iTunes. Okay, and so I have VLC, which is perfectly capable of interacting with my LAN system. Now, on Windows, I don't do that just because I just don't do much with media on my Windows computer. It kind of stays docked over here and doesn't really move, and I have other media things I can do on other computers. Now, with VLC, I do have it on my tablets and on my phones because it allows me to come into VLC. I can interact with my... Uh, my internal media server in the office and on the iPhone I can simply download whatever music I would like off of that server onto the phone. So that way I have the ability with VLC to listen to any of the music that I have across any of my devices inside of my office. That is why I like it. It's easy to use. You can record with it, you can save files with it, you can convert files with it. It just does about everything. Also, if you happen to have you know, the newer versions of Windows outside Windows 7, Windows 7 was the last version of Windows that actually came with DVD codecs. Now, it, a lot of your systems had some other device. An HP computer would have an HP device. A Dell computer would have a Dell device. Something that can play DVDs on your computer but it's becoming less and less mainstream because they want you to buy the Windows DVD player from the store. But VLC can do it, except, of course, on Windows 10. They've even stripped the codecs out of that. So you have to on Windows 10. Eh, just switch to Linux and deal with it that way. Um, but VLC does come prepackaged with all of the codecs. Uh, install that you would need to uh, to play your uh, your DVDs. I can just pop the DVDs in my drive here on the computer, and this will play them without a problem. So there is my first pick is VLC. My second pick is Kodi. So Kodi is a platform that I use on. Um, uh, I use I use it on my. Um, um, Raspberry Pi for my media center. I have it on um, uh, on my devices. I have it on my um, uh, let's see. I I think I have Cody on this tablet as well. So you can put it on your tablets. You can put it on your Raspberry Pi. You can put it on your computers. Yes, yeah, so I put Cody over here on on my uh, tablet as well. So 
you can play play uh, Cody. The reason I like Cody and the reason it is up here is just the ability to view and manage and change the themes, etc. Um, on how to use Cody is a very fabulous, uh, very fabulous system. So in this case of this computer, um, Linux Mint KDE has a hard time with with um, um, video. Um, what is it? Uh, media servers. It has a hard time with a lot of other things, which made interacting with my music a little bit more difficult. And so what I'm using is FStab to um, uh, load up my NAS servers at the boot up of the computer. So then this is simply programmed in. If I update any of the music on my overall global network, it will automatically update the music here. What I like about it is you can come in and you can sort by the album, sort by the artists. Um, I'm not sure if I actually have a lot of the album art on this. My Raspberry Pi, I make sure there's album art on there because that's all on the TV. It looks a lot cooler. It also looks like what's on my LAN needs fixed as far as the uh, uh, as far as the file. So I'm gonna have to bust out my Kid 3 and fix my uh, fix my music on my server. I thought I'd done that already, but. Um, but Cody is my number two pick, number two pick for Cody, just because it's it's easy to use, it's versatile. Also, if you uh, if you do have this on a computer, hitting the backspace key will toggle full screen and window mode. Um, you can also boot into uh, uh, another fun thing is you can boot into it. It it is its own desktop environment, um, so you can boot into it as a different uh, alternative desktop environment. So that's my number two. Uh, my number three um, is one that I got into using a lot more on OpenSUSE, um, and that was Clementine, just because that happened to be the default media player on, uh, on my OpenSUSE computer. So what I like about Clementine is it's, uh, uh, what I don't like about it first is it's, uh, it's music only. Uh, what is nice about it is if you are a modern person who likes all of the different internet type accounts, you can use it without a without a real big uh, big problem. I don't use any of these types of things, so I don't know how well they work. You can let me know, but you can get in here and uh, you can, uh, I guess, interact with a SoundCloud, etc. Um, as far as my library, you just come up here into Tools. Hit your preferences, and then you can add folders um, in your library. So under your music library, you'll see what I did here is this is where I have my NAS drive, uh, the music folder on my NAS drive mounted on this computer. So I simply go in here, add new folder, add it, and it will automatically update the library with everything that you have. So here I can come in and I can uh, click on each individual file here. I can see everything and... I can click the songs and play. Um, is it playing? It's a little slower. It, like I said, it did that buffering. I'm not sure if other systems do that or not. Of course, in KDE, it will uh, keep itself docked down there in the bottom. Um, so that is my third choice. My fourth choice, and the only reason it's my fourth choice is because it's not uh, it's not quite readily used anymore, although I like it better than most of the other ones, and that is Banshee. And Kitty wants to come and say hi. Hi, everybody. Use Banshee. It rocks. Um, what I like about Banshee, it can play uh, audio and it can play video. Um, but what I like about it is it has an old Windows, um, the Windows Media Player feel. And that's the feel that I've absolutely always loved. You can see here it's still in the process of downloading some of the, uh, some of the album art. Um, I think I, if I remember correctly, I kind of like to, had to force it to download certain al album arts. But here I could uh, sort all of the, you know, all the different music into the different uh, folders. I can do a list view. I can do a uh, an album art view. This is just the exact type of system I like. It works beautifully. It's wonderful. The only downside, of course, Linux Mint 18, uh, they stopped uh, packaging Banshee with it. But this was, for me, the favorite media player that I had. 
some people say it's abandoned. It's not abandoned. It's just that the it utilizes a lot of the other um, a lot of the other codecs and and other uh, uh, G Streamer etc. That makes all this stuff work. And all Banshee is is a UI, so it doesn't need a whole lot of updating. They are still active on the forums, but they haven't released a new version for a few years. And that's led some people to say it's abandoned. It's not abandoned, it's just not something that, that they're constantly updating the UI. And that's probably what I like the most about it. I'm not a fan of big modern UIs. I'm not a fan of changing something for the sake of, oh, this looks old. I like something that works, that's consistent, that's easy to use, and for me, this is it. There's no internet, like crazy internet stuff all over it. There's not, you know, all sorts of stuff going all over the place. This is exactly what I want because I do not go out and do live streaming stuff from everywhere else. I have a set amount of music. I want to listen to that music and that's all I want it, uh, want it to use. So that's my top four pick. And my fifth pick is Rhythm Box, if I can find it. So Rhythmbox, uh, this is the standard that's usually installed with, uh, with most systems. I do not care for Rhythmbox a whole lot. The only place I really use Rhythmbox is I use it for uh, interacting with podcasts. You can set this to come in and download your podcasts over here. And then uh, you can, it'll download your podcasts so that you can listen to those. Um, I, as far as how it handles media libraries and things like that, I absolutely hate it. Um, but, you yeah, know, that's my opinion. Uh, one of just, you know, just one Linux guy's opinion. I'm not a fan of Rhythmbox. I use it, like I said, for podcasts. I don't use it for really anything else. So those are my top five media players for Linux. So if you are considering a switch over to Linux and you're wondering how you're going to play the media files that you have, those are the individual programs that you might want to have a look at. Um, other ones like uh, KDE has, or at least Linux Mint KDE, it comes with um, Amarok, which I don't like at all. Um, I found it very hard, clunky to use, and um, it just just didn't work for me. And then Dragon Player comes default installed here, um, which is okay. I don't mind Dragon Player, but I don't intentionally open things in it. I think a lot of uh, like movie files are still defaulted into, uh, into Dragon Player. I'll play them there. That's fine. But if I have a choice, I'll usually load them up in VLC um, because it does a lot better uh, control over uh, DVDs and better control over um, just making sure that... that uh, video files play well. Banshee will play video files, but you end up with like a green line across the side, so that's why I don't use that. Um, and if it's a file that I can drop on my NAS server, I use um, Kodi for that because that's the best. So those are my top five media players for Linux. And this computer here is Linux Mint uh, KDE. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Bye, everybody. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.